How do you start a story that hooks the reader and keeps them turning pages? This is a lot harder than it seems. There is so much that goes into the start of your story. What we're talking about here is the inciting incident of your story. By the end of this video, you'll have a four part checklist to create your own perfect inciting incident. Plus, I'm going to show you lots of examples along the way. My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid. I've been working with writers for over 15 years. My partner, Sean Coyne, is the creator and founder of StoryGrid, and he is a writer and editor with over 30 years of experience. First off, what is the definition of an inciting incident? It's two things. The first is a ball of chaos that spins into the story and knocks the protagonist's life out of balance. The protagonist's life is going as expected. It doesn't mean that their life is going good, it's just going as expected. So they could be in a horrible position in life, but their life is going about as they expect that it should, and then something comes into their life and knocks it off of balance. This can be perceived as a bad thing by the protagonist, a cancer diagnosis, a nuclear threat, or it could be perceived as a good thing, a love interest or a job opportunity. The point is your protagonist's life is going on as expected and something comes in, some ball of chaos comes in and knocks their life off balance. So that's the first part of the inciting incident is a ball of chaos that comes into their life. The second part is it has to kick off the full global story. It is the event that sets the story in motion. For the rest of the story, the protagonist is dealing with the ramifications of that inciting incident. Now, this doesn't mean the inciting incident has to be some huge thing. In The Pride and Prejudice, it was just somebody new moving to town. In The Hobbit, it was just an old man coming to visit a hobbit. And yet, it set off this chain of events that the protagonist was dealing with for the rest of the story. It can also, of course, be a huge thing. Like in The Martian, when Mark Watney gets left behind on Mars, or when Jake Epping is shown the time portal in the book 112263 by Stephen King. Whatever it is, the protagonist is dealing with the ramifications of the inciting incident at the beginning of the story for the rest of the story. Now that we know what an inciting incident is, let's talk about the two different types. The first is causal. This is when the inciting incident is an active choice by a character in the story. So it could be a wife leaving the husband, it could be a job offer to the protagonist, or it could be somebody burning down the house of the protagonist. Whatever it is, it is causal when it is an active decision by a character in the story. On the other side is coincidental. This is when the inciting incident just happens to happen. A tornado hits the protagonist's town, an air conditioner falls out of the window, or maybe the protagonist wins the lottery. Whatever it is, it's a coincidence. Now I'm going to pause here and just point out that sometimes at the beginning of the story, the inciting incident is ambiguous. So in a crime story, we may have a dead body and we're not sure at the beginning if it was a murder, which would be causal, or if it was an accident, which would be coincidental. But you as the writer, the author, have to know whether your inciting incident is causal or coincidental. And just as a side here, the inciting incident can happen both on and off the page. For instance, in The Handmaid's Tale, when Handmaid Offred arrives at the house where she's going to be impregnated, that is the inciting incident and it actually happens between chapter one and chapter two, so it's off the page. Whereas in 2 a.m. at the Cat's Pajamas, we see the citation given to Lynn Thomas that is threatening to close down his nightclub. So the inciting incident doesn't have to be on the page. Most of the time it is, but it doesn't have to be. But you, the writer, have to be really clear about the inciting incident, and it has to be really clear to the reader as well so they know what's kicking off the story and knocking your protagonist's life off balance. Okay, so now I want to give you our four-part checklist on how you can create the perfect inciting incident. These are the rules for your inciting incident. Your inciting incident has to abide by each of these four things. Number one, it must meet genre conventions. Now, if you don't know about genre conventions, I have a whole video on these. You can check it out down in the description of this video, but the inciting incident has to meet the conventions of your genre. In a crime story, you have to have the discovery of the body or the discovery of the crime. And in a story like Murder on the Orient and Express, by Agatha Christie, it's when Ratchet is found dead. In an action story, it has to be the initial attack. In a story like The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, 
it is when the cyclone comes and hits Dorothy's town. In a love story, it's when two lovers meet. So in Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare, it's when Romeo and Juliet meet at the Capulet's party. So rule number one in creating your inciting incident is it has to abide by genre conventions. Rule number two is it has to create imbalance in the protagonist's life. We've already gone over this, but this is the thing that comes into their life and knocks their life off balance and the protagonist spends the rest of the story trying to get their life back on track. In The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, it's when the cousin of the long lost love of Gatsby moves in next door. In Moby Dick by Herman Melville, it's when a young boy takes a job on a whaling vessel. In John Wick, written by Derek Kolstadt, it's when some gangsters show up at John's house and kills his dog. So rule number two is your inciting incident must create imbalance in the protagonist's life. Rule number three is there has to be invisible elements to the inciting incident. There must be parts of the inciting incident that the protagonist does not yet fully understand. There are hidden elements to it that will come to light throughout the story. So what that means is the inciting incident has elements to it that make it much bigger than the protagonist sees at the beginning, or they just don't understand to the full scope that this inciting incident is going to affect their life. In the book The Firm by John Grisham, Mitch McDear has no idea that this amazing job offered to work for this amazing prestigious law firm is that they're a bunch of gangsters and he's going to end up working for criminals. In Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, when Harry Potter finds out he's a wizard and he starts heading off to Hogwarts, he has no idea that the evil that he's going to have to confront once he's there. In The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, Katniss doesn't understand that by volunteering to go to the Hunger Games and probably die, that she's going to face so many bigger problems when it comes to who she protects and how she protects the ones that she loves. So rule number three for your inciting incident is that it must have hidden elements to the protagonist. They cannot fully understand all of the ramifications of the inciting incident. Rule number four for your inciting incident is it has to point to the end. The ending of your story must in some way mirror the inciting incident of your story. So a story grid, we always say that your story must have a surprising but inevitable end. And so what this means is when your reader first gets to the end of the book, they're surprised by it, but on further reflection, they realize, well, that's really the only way the story could ever end. And that's because it reflects the inciting incident. So looking back at The Martian by Andy Weir, Mark Watney is stranded on Mars by his fellow astronauts. And those are the astronauts that end up coming back to save him. In The Sphere by Michael Crichton, the protagonist used the power that was destroying them, killing the other people that were with them and threatening humanity. They use that power to save humanity and nullify the threat. In a crime story like Murder on the Orient Express, the discovery of the body points to the end of the story when, like most crime stories, the murderer or murderers is revealed. So that's your four-part checklist to make a perfect inciting incident for your story. Rule number one is it has to abide by genre conventions. Rule number two is it has to create an imbalance in the protagonist's life. Rule number three is it has to have hidden elements that the protagonist does not understand. And rule four is it has to point to the end of your story. Now, here's the thing about the inciting incident. It's just the first in the five commandments of storytelling. Also, in this video, we looked at the inciting incident for your entire global story, but you have inciting incidents at every level of your story from the global story all the way down to individual beats. So I'm gonna be doing a whole series on the five commandments of storytelling and how they apply to all the different levels of your storytelling. So check down in the description for those as well. If they're all done, you're gonna find the links down there. If they're not, I'll let you know that as well. But either way, I'm gonna keep creating videos to help you become a better writer. So make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video and hit that bell so you get notified of all of them as they come out. We also have lots of resources available at storygrid.com. Make sure you go there and sign up for the newsletter. That's how you're gonna get all the cool stuff that we do at StoryGrid to help you improve your writing. And finally, as always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.